This video is sponsored by NAS brand Asus Store. Let me tell you, when I started building home labs, I didn't have a lot. I just found computers that I had laying around. I had small little five port switches. I had my main router coming in and I had a few desktop computers and that was enough for me to get started. I mean, most commonly, most people are gonna have some sort of an internet connection coming into their house. A link coming from the outside into their house, providing them some sort of internet connection. And that's connected to some sort of a router, like a modem, maybe it's got a built-in switch, and that device itself, maybe it's like a built-in firewall and you can create routes and you can create some sort of port forwarding. You've probably got computers acting in various forms. Maybe they are servicing something out on your network. You've got all of your smart devices, your phones, your tablets that are connecting into this sort of a network. Maybe you wanna get a little bit more geeky. You wanna tech it up a little bit and that's where you start deploying a little bit more of a enterprisey sort of setup but in your home. Remember to smash that button. Well, actually, no, don't smash it. Click on it with your mouse or with your finger if you're on a smartphone, but subscribe, clicking on the button on the bell so you don't miss out on anything. In a workplace, you're commonly gonna have server rooms, comms rooms, data centers, where all of the IT equipment lives, right? This is where all the servers live, the networking equipment, all of the security is all managed in these central locations. But then at home, you've probably got just stuff all over the place. Perhaps across rooms in your house, you've got different types of tech gear. But then what's nice is if you spend a little bit of time, a little bit of effort, a little bit of money, you can get yourself a nice little setup where you can house all of your equipment in one location and then centrally manage all of it. And that's commonly what's called a home lab. It's a place where you can go and actually deploy a whole bunch of test gear for your own purposes of learning comes in a range of different shapes and sizes. They can be small, medium, or large. They really depend on the sort of gear that you're gonna be sticking inside of it. You know, a lot of people are gonna have the ability to have a whole bunch of old tech laying around. And one of the great things about a home life is that you can repurpose some of this old tech to do your own learning. You can actually have an old desktop computer and then stick some virtualization technology onto it and then run a whole bunch of virtual machines directly on that one computer. So you're giving that computer another life. Other times you may need to go and spend a little bit of cash or you may need to go and have a look at what you've got and maybe re-tinker it a little bit to maybe give it a new purpose. Like for an example, you could have a computer that is your main computer, but then you can actually go and install some virtualization software onto it. You can install some networking software onto it to start learning a new sort of technology. Maybe you do have have a router, you know, your internet is coming in and it's going via this router, but all it's doing is it's giving you an internet connection. You log into your router, you're gonna see more than likely you've got a whole bunch of other features in there that you probably have not played around with. One of the great things about learning a lot more about tech, start doing your own research about what routing even is, talking about NAT, what is a NAT? What is the purpose of port forwarding? And a lot of these devices have a lot of these things built right in. Now, before we even get started, you've got to have a think to yourself and go, self, what do I want to achieve? What is the purpose of this home lab? Is it for the purposes of learning? Like, do you work in technology? Or maybe you want to work more in technology or get into technology? Well, you probably then want to go and build and design your home lab to cater for that. Maybe you are just wanting to get the perks and learn a little bit more about the perks of what a home lab can give you to your home network because it can do a lot for you. It's a lab, yes, to do your own learning, to do your own tinkering, but you can actually get a lot of benefits out of it because if you go and build a DNS server or some DHCP servers onto it, well then you actually serve a purpose for the rest of your network. So sit down and make a plan. And of course, with making a plan, you've got to think about what is your budget. How much are you willing to spend, right? The last thing that you want to do is go and spend a certain amount of money. And then in two, three months time, you realize I should have spent a hundred dollars more and it's too late because you've already spent the money. You also need to have a think about how big do you want your home lab to be? How big is it going to be in the next six months? You need to have a think about where are you going to be placing this? Are you going to be putting it in a cupboard somewhere? Are you going to put it just in a closet? Are you going to put it in the garage? Are you going to be putting it in your bedroom? The location where you're going to be putting it May be a little bit tricky to get cables too if you're gonna be running ethernet. You may also get a little bit hot, may also be a little bit noisy. So really have a think about how big is this thing gonna get and where it's gonna actually live. So different components. First and foremost, you need to establish the network. The network is sort of like the foundation, the bread and butter. Without a good network in place, you're really not gonna be able to connect anything 
to it. So this is where you got to think about, I mentioned at the start, where your internet is coming in. Where is your internet coming in from the street? And what sort of a device is that running into? You've got routers, you've got switches, right? You may have a switch built into your router. You've got your modem, which is where you're gonna get your internet connection into. Switches are gonna come in a vast range of ports. Switches are gonna be a must because that's where you're gonna be running devices into. Now we are gonna be talking about Wi-Fi in a little bit, but if you're physically running things with ethernet, you maybe have a gigabit ethernet or a 10 gigabit ethernet. Well, a switch is gonna have a whole range of ports. You could start off with like a four port switch or moving to something significantly better like a 24 or a 48 port switch depending on how many devices you've got. I've got a couple of switches right here. One that is my primary core switch we'll call it. This is the main switch, a HP switch where all of my stuff is running into. I've also got a Cisco managed switch underneath it. Now you've got to also think about whether you're going to be going for a managed or an unmanaged switch. An unmanaged switch means that you just run all of the cables into the switch and the switch just does its thing. You don't have management abilities. There is no way that you can log in to the switch via a web browser. You can't customize the port speeds. You can't set up VLANs. You won't be able to segregate the actual ports into groups across that switch. That's sort of what an unmanaged switch is and they're generally gonna be cheaper. Like let's say you wanna become a network engineer, you wanna learn more about networking, then it's probably good for you to look at investing in a managed switch, a switch that actually has management. In the realm of networking, of course, have a think about your wireless networking. Do you perhaps want to stick wireless devices on your network? They have wireless access points sticking around your house. Now, I don't know how your wireless access points are gonna be configured, but a lot of these wireless access points, you can actually run them into a central switch, like a essentially a switch for managing your wireless network. Brands could be like Meraki or Ubiquiti. There's a whole bunch of others. They may also provide power over ethernet, which essentially allows you to power on maybe a wireless access point just with a network cable. You're probably gonna have firewalls. You're gonna have pieces of tech that are dedicated for providing security to your network. Verify all of the traffic going in and going out, making sure that there's only authorized access to the people who need access, making sure that only certain ports are open and other ports are closed. Have some of these firewalls will also provide VPN. You know, for example, allowing you to VPN into your home network is another nice little thing you could do. But as I said at the very start, if you do have your own router, your own modem router at home, that may be sufficient. And if you've got ethernet points on the back, maybe you've got a four point ethernet or five point ethernet on the back, that may be fine because that's maybe all you need. Everything else is gonna be running into that. Maybe this device has got built-in Wi-Fi. Perfect, you've already got the one device for everything. Now from there, you then move to the server gear. What sort of servers are you going to be getting? Small versus large computer. Do I get a little micro computer? Do I get a fully fledged rack server for my home lab? It can be very, very confusing because there are so many options available to you. Where do you start? Are you gonna be buying a small, medium or large? Well, a lot of this is irrelevant until you really understand what this thing is gonna be used for. Because if you're gonna be needing something that is pretty grunty, something that needs a bit of hard drive space, you wanna pump it with a lot of RAM, then sometimes a small little device may not be suitable. You may need to get something bigger. So this is where you've got to think about well, a small computer may not have a very big hard drive. A larger one may have a lot more. Your mini computers, these little things are super efficient. They're tiny, they're compact. Some of them do not even have a fan. All of these are great. And they are perfect if you just wanna run some basic things onto them. Now, most of these, yes, you can run Windows on some of them. You can run Linux. You can even run VMware's ESXi, or you can do Proxmox, you can do any of these virtualization technologies onto it and build lots of computers or virtual machines. I mean, ultimately any computer can be deployed as a server as long as the right software is running onto it, okay? That's something you've got to think about. But of course, with something that is a little bit bigger, you can have much better resources inside of it. Now, these sorts of servers are really more high-end. They're a lot more high-powered. Commonly, you're gonna find these in an enterprise. In a business, they're gonna be running servers such as this. You could look at rack servers or blade servers. They sort of 
come in different configurations. You can get skinny ones, you can get ones that are slightly thicker, and then even bigger and bigger and bigger. And you can just do a whole lot with it. You deploy them with certain RAID configurations, you have redundancy, you've got a lot more network points. You maybe even have options around fiber channel if you wanna run fiber channel connections. But the other thing is that they are gonna be noisy, right? When they are turned on, they're not quiet, they're not silent. Now the nice thing of course about these little ones is that they're tiny, they're tiny. You don't have to worry so much about the space requirements. And you could potentially buy more than one of these for the cost of something like these bigger, gruntier servers. You've got a computer, you've got a computer at home, you've got, uh, it's running Windows, you know, Windows 10, Windows 11. You've got the Mac, it's running the Mac OS version. Even you got Linux potentially as well. But then what you can do, is you can actually install some virtualization software directly onto that computer. This thing called a hypervisor, where you're now converting this thing into a virtual server, into a host. And then you can build VMs, you build Windows, Linux within a server. Bigger ones are gonna be your VMware, Citrix. And then you've also got Proxmox, and this is Proxmox VE. And then the last one is Microsoft's Hyper-V. Which one is best? And the reality is they all have their pros and cons. They're all awesome in their own way. They all have their advantages. They all have their disadvantages. Now the data that's on these servers needs to physically be sitting somewhere. If you wanna be able to build a bit more of a dedicated environment, ideally you don't use the storage that's loaded directly onto a server. You have the storage loaded onto a dedicated storage device such as a NAS. So a NAS you can stick all of your software, your documents, your virtual machines directly onto a NAS. If you've got your computer or your server and you've now converted this into a virtualization environment, maybe you've used Proxmox, maybe you've used VMware's ESXi, it's now now running the hypervisor. Well, the storage and where you're gonna be putting all of these VMs, the best spot to put it is on a NAS. And this is what I love about the ASUS Store NAS, is on the NAS itself, I can point my servers directly onto the NAS. This is a four bay NAS. There are other brands of NASs out there, but this thing is brilliant. It's a four port NAS, has all the connections that you need. The great thing about this device is that you can stick it full of your disks. You create the relevant RAID group, it gives you redundancy. So if a disk fails, you don't lose all of your data. You can also grab disks together and make a significantly bigger disk. What I love about it is you can also install software directly onto the NAS. It's not just for storage. So the NAS itself really sort of becomes a little bit like a server. You can run things like such as Plex, you can run VPN onto it. You can service other sorts of things on your network. The great thing is you can also do backups and all of these other things so you don't lose out on anything. So this is why I love a NAS and especially if you're gonna be getting a NAS, you have to check out the ASUS store one. I've got a link down below in the show notes to so go and check it out. Now, as I said earlier, I've got all of this stuff sitting inside of my rack, right? This is my rack, I've got some shelves. I've got cable trays where I run all my cables. I make the thing look overall neat. I've put some neon lights to make it look nice. Now, of course, this is all optional. You don't have to do something like this. And the great thing is in future, if I need to just move it, I don't have to unplug all of my gear. I just take the whole box with me. If you want to power the whole thing, you may want to consider looking at a UPS. You can get some PDUs or power distribution units. In my office, of course, at work, I had lots of UPSs. I wanted to make sure that all of the equipment was always powered on all the time. But then at home, I never thought about it. So I thought one day, hey, I'm gonna get myself a UPS. So I got myself a UPS. I've now got it plugged up. And now my entire home lab can have about 45 minutes worth of power on my UPS. Now that you've got your servers, you've got your networking gear, you've got your storage, have a think about some of the services that you may wanna be able to host from your network. Do you wanna be hosting DNS? Do you wanna be building a domain running Active Directory? Do you wanna be running DHCP? Maybe throwing out IP addresses. That's the whole point of DHCP. Is that it's gonna be giving IP addresses to all of the devices on your network. Well, you can centrally manage that in your home lab. You could run a web server. You could run a whole bunch of other things. So what you stick in a home lab is not up to me. 
It's not up to me. Have a think about what you're wanting to do, what you're wanting to achieve, and the bits and pieces to get started. And look, let me tell you, when I started building home labs, I didn't have a lot. I just found computers that I had laying around. I had small little five port switches. I had my main router coming in and I had a few desktop computers. And that was enough for me to get started. So start off small. Go and pick up the NAS, the ASUS store down the bottom in the show notes. Lastly, remember to smash that button. Well, actually, no, don't smash it. Click on it with your mouse or with your finger if you're on a smartphone, but subscribe, clicking on the button on the bell so you don't miss out on anything. Until next time, we continue talking about all things tech. We'll see you on the next video.